Uh, we'll now move to Mr. John Valiant, journalist and author, for five minutes. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm an independent journalist and author from Vancouver. My work is evidence-based and fact-based. There are about a thousand endnotes, footnotes, and citations in this book. Fireweather is currently a bestseller and finalist for national prizes in three different countries, and I think it's because the topic, how our appetite for petroleum has supercharged the atmosphere, endangering us all, resonates with people, especially after this terrible summer of CO2-driven heat and fire. Before I get into that, I want to say how honored I am to be here. I come in good faith as a proud Canadian who loves this country and who's grateful for the extraordinary gifts petroleum has given us. Canada and the oil industry are about the same age, and we've both come a long way in a short time. And so, unfortunately, has our climate. When Fort McMurray caught fire in May 2016, I was as shocked as anyone. Winter was barely over. Local lakes were still frozen, and yet the temperature in northern Alberta hit 33 Celsius. More disturbing was the relative humidity, 11%. You know where 11% humidity is normal? Death Valley in July. When you transpose the climate of the hottest, driest place in North America to the Canadian boreal forest, a famously flammable ecosystem, otherworldly things are going to happen, and they did. Quick science lesson, radiant heat the heat that tells you not to touch the candle flame travels at the speed of light. On May 3, 2016, the radiant heat coming off the Fort McMurray fire, 10 kilometers wide with 100 meter flames, was 500 Celsius. That's hotter than Venus. That was Fort McMurray on May 3rd, May 4th, and day after day after day after that. That was also this summer in BC, Alberta, Quebec, and the Northwest Territories. Firefighters in Fort Mac described houses burning to the basement in five minutes. I thought they were exaggerating. They weren't. I talked to physicists. That's what fire can do at 500 Celsius. As a result, the firefighting operation became a life-saving operation because there was no time to do anything else. What surprises everyone about 21st century fire is how fast it moves. Talk to anyone in Slave Lake or Fort Mac or Kelowna or Enterprise Northwest Territories. There was a plume over there, and now I'm running for my life. This is happening because the hotter and drier the air and the forest, the faster and more explosive the fire. Climate science isn't rocket science. By the 1770s, the greenhouse effect was understood in principle. By the 1850s, the heat-retaining characteristics of CO2 had been identified. By the 1890s, scientists were considering the possibility that industrial CO2 could alter Earth's climate. By the 1930s, evidence of warming was observed in global temperature records. By the 1950s, mass spectrometers could measure CO2 in parts per million, hence the famous Keeling curve. By the 1970s, Exxon, Rich Kruger's old company, was doing cutting-edge climate science. Internal memos reveal surgically accurate predictions regarding the relationship between increasing CO2 and the climate disruption we are now experiencing. Exxon knew, and so did Suncor. And then, in 1989, they turned their backs on their own science, and they did it because they cared about the money more. They did it because they know the oil industry is, in essence, a fire industry, which means it's a CO2 industry, which means it's a climate changing industry. This is basic chemistry and <coughs> physics, and we cannot deny or grasslight, gaslight or greenwash that fact away. To be clear, oil is a 19th century fuel. The internal combustion engine was prototyped in 1860. Why on earth are we still using it? 200,000 Canadians were driven from their homes by wildfires this summer. Tens of millions of North Americans were shrouded in toxic smoke. The Amazon River is drying up. If we don't reduce emissions now, we're going to make this planet uninhabitable. Canada's leadership matters here. Our survival depends on it. And here's the upside. When it comes to renewable energy potential, Canada really is a superpower. Right now, we are perfectly poised to embrace the greatest 
greenest energy opportunity the world has ever known. So who's stopping us? Thank you.